Wow, wow, wow. We are live streaming here. And the NHL's draft lottery just concluded. Man, it's, uh, in a way, it's it's okay. In a way, there's going to be drama and controversy for years to come. The Chicago Blackhawks end up getting the number one overall pick, which is most certainly going to land them Connor Bedard, right? That's who, whoever was going to pick first is going to get Connor Bedard. And the year after Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane both essentially depart Chicago, I mean, the year that Chicago turns a chapter from two iconic franchise players, they get to open the door to a brand new one in Connor Bedard. You can book it that uh, Fantilli's going to go second to Anaheim. So that leaves Columbus and San Jose in an interesting dilemma and scenario. Now, it, it does appear top five or six. I mean, forwards are going to go heavy here in this draft. But that leaves the interesting question of would Columbus go with a Leo Carlson? And does that leave Matvey Michkov to go fourth to San Jose or vice versa? The top two, number one and number two, are pretty well spoken for. And now we just know the teams and the the cities that they'll be going to. But circling back to San Jose, and and this is maybe, you know, look, a bit of the hope and and, uh, frustration and optimism that everybody had was that there was a, a certain percentage that the Sharks would get lucky here and fate would bring them a number one pick. Here are the odds, as they were. Anaheim statistically had the best odds to get it. Obviously, uh, they're not picking first. Columbus had the second best odds. They're not picking first. Chicago is at 11.5%. And if you if you just think about that for a second, Chicago had 2% better odds than the Sharks. And they're the ones that will be able to pick first. They're the ones that are going to honestly have their franchise, and I want to say changed, but they, they will continue their course of having foundational players in their franchise. Now, to be fair, even if the Sharks had won the draft lottery, and I said this would have been the most fortunate thing to happen to them ever if they picked first overall, whoever gets Connor Bedard, it's Chicago, they still have to build around that player. One player alone, as they know, look, as Chicago very well knows, Kane and Taves, look what they did together collectively in the last couple of years. You need a Keith, a Seabrook, a Patrick Sharp. You need all those players combined to make the team that, yeah, wins Stanley Cups and is competitive every year. The Sharks would have been in the same boat, that Connor Bedard alone was was not enough to, you know, it, it would have been enough to, to give you a foundation of your franchise, but it alone was not going to totally change your franchise. But the the Chicago Blackhawks are in a scenario where in that market, with that team, with that, you know, fan base and the way that they can draw and the United Center is going to be packed next year. Even if the team is still probably not very good, the excitement around Connor Bedard in Chicago is going to be nuts. I was talking to somebody earlier today, and I, I said, if Chicago picks first, if they get this, they win the lottery, there's going to be talk about fixing for years because of this, because of who they just had, what they no longer have, and now what they're about to get. And because of, let, let's just be honest here, looking at, looking at the geography. I mean, it would have been a stretch for Montreal to get in there, but obviously they would have liked Bedard. Arizona and their whole situation. Did you really want Connor playing it on the campus of ASU for a couple more years? Not really, but you know, small market there. California market in San Jose. Columbus, a small market. Anaheim in Los Angeles, technically like the metropolitan area, but Anaheim is not Los Angeles. Let's also be clear about that. And Chicago. Chicago is the biggest, baddest, best thing for the league. Let's be honest. This was the best thing for the National Hockey League. Now, I will say, from the Sharks' lens, fortunate that Connor Bedard's not going to be playing in the Pacific Division. Fantilli will. And look, whoever the Sharks get, I, I don't want to minimize, I don't want to minimize this because if you go back to 
if you go back to the way the standings finished at the end of the regular season, this is how it was in inverse order. Anaheim had the worst record, then Columbus and Chicago. The Sharks had the fourth worst record, and they got the fourth overall pick. So can you be terribly upset with that? The answer is no. It's kind of a meh situation. There was a possibility, by the way, that the Sharks could have picked fifth or sixth. So remind yourself, it easily could have been worse. It also could have been better. Chicago had a 2% better chance of getting this. And they got it. And they got it. And they got it. I have the new, I have the new, I have that button. I, I don't think I need to use it yet. Say something bad and you know, that's how I feel right now. <laughs> oh man. Is it a conspiracy? Is it not? Whoa. Didn't mean to do that. Um, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that it is. I'm going to say that it's, it's frustrating. I'm going to say that you know, we all watch the end of the shark season among the worst records in the league, knowing that Connor Bedard's out there. They're still going to get a very good player, whether it's Mitchkov, who comes with an interesting background and a, and a whole scenario. And I very much encourage everybody out there to go back on this channel right now. I've got player profiles of who I think would be the top six draft picks. I did six because that's the, the lowest the Sharks could have picked. I did one on Benson, Will Smith. Uh, Leo Carlson, I did one on uh, Mitch Kov, Fantilli, and obviously Connor Bedard. So those previews are all out there right now. I see Manny V asking the question here, uh, early prediction for the fourth pick. And it's it's honestly, like I said, it's, it's really hard to know. Let me see if I can prepare this properly to, uh, to go on the live chat. It's really hard to know. Because I don't, I don't know who, what Columbus is going to do ahead of the Sharks. Again, you know who one is. You know who two is. It's going to be, in my opinion, if Carlson's out there, Leo Carlson's there, Matvey Michkov is an interesting story. He's under contract with the KHL until 25-26. You don't really get to have him in your, truly have him in your pipeline for a couple more years. So that might be a deterrent of the Sharks actually taking him. Yeah, thanks, Batman. See, that's what, <laughs> that's what a lot of people will say. And that's the other part of this, Cricket, is the Sharks will get a good player. They will get a, you know, hopefully a long time, like a, a good, big, building block type piece. Uh, is it Alvaro? Carlson will be a shark. Yeah, we'll, we'll go back to having two Carlsons again. A, a C Carlson, as in Leo, and a K Carlson, as in Eric. Just, oh, Triple G, oh, uh, Triple G 806, as in Will Smith. Yeah, uh, highly touted as well, too. Take the best player available at fourth overall. Do you take the best player? What if that player, if I told you it was Matvey Michkov, and you wouldn't be able to have him on your team for a couple years? Even in your, in your pipeline for a couple years, he's committed to the KHL. I don't know if they hate Northern California, but I'm telling you, just going back to the, like, going back to the whole root of, you know, this and, and how it was, Chicago with only a 2% better chance than the Sharks, and the third, out of, out of those top three teams, having, you know, kind of the worst... Uh, and and look, here's another thing. I understand today's a day where a lot of Sharks fans are going to go and circle back onto the end of the season. And there was that three-game win streak and points in four straight games and say, well, you were that close to being the third worst. Look, it may, this is all a lottery, right? It's all random. But I, I understand that sentiment. I'm just saying, look how crazy it was. If you're Anaheim or Columbus right now, you just got leapfrogged by Chicago. You feel the same way. Everybody kind of feels the same way about Chicago. So there it is. Chicago will pick first. Anaheim will pick second. Columbus will pick third. I mean, I think Anaheim's got to be pretty excited. I would have been stoked 
if the Sharks were picking second. It was only a slight chance that the Sharks would be able to pick third. There was a contingency. It was either going to be maybe first, maybe second, but probably fourth, and that's how it played out. It's the Sharks' highest draft pick. I don't think they've had a top five since 1998. 97, remember, they picked Patrick Marlowe second overall. Let me just close the video by saying this would have been the luckiest thing to ever happen to the San Jose Sharks had they picked first overall. And it didn't happen. And they could have picked fifth or sixth overall, too. This could have been worse. So remind yourself, as frustrated as you are and may be, and, you know, obviously wanted better, um, didn't we all for the team? Didn't we want that new foundational piece? But as the kids say, it is what it is. And that is the... Yeah, that's that's going to be the end of this live stream. So instant reaction, Sharks will pick fourth overall in the 2023 draft happening later this summer. Um, Let me know what you think if you're watching this video a little bit later on in the comments section below.